What's up YouTube? Jose here at Wire Ninjas, the Tri-State's finest audio video install team. Today we got a hot and fresh video for you as part of our install series. We're going to show you how to wire an audio video receiver or an AVR, home theater receiver, whatever you want to call it. We're going to do it in a 5.1 configuration and we're going to simply stick to the wiring aspect of it. That way you guys can learn digest the information and utilize it in the field or on your little personal projects, whatever you have going for yourselves. We'll stick to just the wiring and we'll show you how to get this thing wired up A to Z. We're also going to go over the ports a little bit, their functionality and stuff like that. And I'm very happy to bring this more in-depth content to you guys. If you like it, please let us know. All right, guys, so let's get into this AVR installation. We're going to start with the ports. Um, this is very common fascia you would see on the back of any AVR and it's kind of nicer that we're starting with a simpler AVR because they get more elaborate depending on the model. We'll start with the video side which let's start with AVR or I'm sorry <laughs> the monitor out port. So this is HDMI out. This is going to go to the TV panel or the projector. Whatever you plan to display the actual video that you're trying to display on. So <laughs> it's a little bit redundant but TV panel goes here, projector goes here, there's no other technologies at this point in time. It's either TV panel or projector. So TV out, as they call it in a Sony, would be called monitor out on another AVR. One thing to note is the ARC, which is audio return channel, or EARC, which is the newer audio return channel, how do you say, platform. So for example, if you have a TV panel that you're shooting the video on from the AVR, you're going to want to use ARC on the AVR respective to the TV as well. That TV is going to have a separate ARC port. And this is commonly used for such things as smart features or functions. When you run the apps on the TV and you run a separate audio system, when you're separating the audio to an external speaker system, you need a way to get the audio back from the TV, being that it's now the source unit because you're using the apps on the TV to the separate audio system. This can be achieved through the ARC port on the TV. It can also be achieved through this coaxial or optical or even an RCA input. See the TV in here? That's what this would be used for. So the TV can have RCA out, it can have optical out, or you can convert. Most TVs are not going to have a single coaxial digital audio out, but it can be converted to do so. So let's hit the next ports. The next HDMI ports are all in ports, as opposed to this being an out port. These are for your source devices, such as your media box, stream box, Apple TV, Xbox, PlayStation, cable box. These are your source plugs. This is where you're gonna plug your sources into. This HDMI carries audio and video, so it's a very simple solution if you use these ports. Now, we talked a little bit about the, the audio coax in. The optical, same thing. You can draw audio from any device that has an optical out to this optical in, capture the audio to the audio system. Antenna, this is an antenna port that actually connects to an antenna supplied by Sony allowing AM and FM radio bands to be picked up by the antenna and streamed through the audio system. Now we have specific audio inputs, left and right RCA or commonly referred to as low level inputs or outputs from the said device. Um, these are not assignable, just like these are assignable. So these are specific to CD, DVD, satellite or cable TV and then uh, specifically for the TV. These RCAs are the same style but a little bit different use. These are subwoofer out. So these are gonna plug directly into the subwoofer. So subwoofer out, that's one port we're gonna to hit today. Then you have the front, right, and left channels, center channel, surround right and left. And then after the 5.1 configuration on almost any receiver, you're gonna have an optional uh, sec, like if it has more than five channels, you're gonna have this, the secondary or seven, you know, that seventh, that sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth channel are gonna be here a little bit separate because usually they're assignable and usually they can be used for different types of speakers or a zone two configuration. I guess we'll do a separate video on specifically zone two configurations or at most height configurations or even assignable audio outs from the amp itself. Like I said, today we're gonna to stick to what is necessary to get a 5.1 going. So let's take a look at my wiring. I have here pre-made a little wiring just for this video. So what we have here is our audio cables for the five speakers. We have surround left, we have center channel, we have front left, surround right, front right. Uh, this is a cat cable for later use. And then we have a subwoofer cable. 
Finally, the HDMI, we still have it wrapped up because it was getting pulled in the wall. It's good to protect your cable while you're pulling them through the wall. So we'll get the tape off that and we'll start wiring this bad boy up for you guys. All right, so when I wire these things, I usually just like to start with one side and wire one way. So for this one, we'll start with the front. It's gonna be front right. So let's find our wire here. These wires have already been toned, tested, validated, and labeled for us, specifically for the video for you guys. So with these screw terminals, sometimes the receiver has all these screw terminals. I like to unscrew them all. Every one I'm using, I like to unscrew them all in one shot. That way it's nice and smooth process when I go installing these one by one. Sometimes you'll be doing, you know, 11 in a row. So it's nice to have things prepped up for you. So I'm prepping these and then we'll start to get the wires in. So we're going to start with the front, right? I like to slip the wires in the top. Now, one thing to note here is it's a screw in the middle. So we want to send the wire down the right side. So when this clamps, it actually pulls the wire into itself. It clamps really nice and it pulls into itself. So I'm going to send the wire down the right side. The post is going to be in the middle. And when we clamp this screw tight, nice and tight, it's actually going to do a good job of pulling the wire more in and making better contact and in fact continuity. Now, one thing you don't want to do is put it this way. If you send the wire, see with the black wire, you don't want to send the wire to the left side of the post because when you go twist to the right and tighten the clamp, it actually pushes the wire outside of the terminal, which is not what you want. You want a nice strong clamp and you want the wire to have good contact and you want it to be seated well and you want it to last a long time for you yourself or your, your clients, or, you know, the homeowners you're dealing with you want a nice robust installation. So this is one little tip or trick I can lend you guys that will give you a lot more success is send the wire in the clockwise direction in which the screw terminal uh, follows. That way it gets clamped down real nice. We gotta find our right channel, or front left, I'm sorry. So front left is next. Another little tip, once these wires are stripped, I like to get a little twist on them. Get a little twist on them. Make sure there's no like hanging wires or like falling over, stuff like that. So we will send the wire in, make sure to go to the right, right side of the post so that it pulls our wire in as we clamp it. Clamp it down. Very good. So again, there you go. Clamp it down. Another thing you to note is you want to, if you pull a little bit more jacket off, it's a little bit easier to wire this stuff up. I like to keep it tidy. So I keep it to about two inches length so that there's not too much jacket missing. You know, it still looks clean, but also you have enough wire length and slack to play with so that you can get your wires into place. Now we have three more channels here. So these are kind of, these are, these are the length of this copper is made for a post binding or a post terminal, not these little spring terminals. These have a smaller inside. So I'm gonna have to cut these wires down, which is cool. So we'll start with the center channel. We can cut them all in one shot actually. Um, for these, I recommend about a quarter inch of exposed wire should be perfect. That way, cause you don't want the wires exceeding or coming out. You don't want the copper coming out of the terminal itself because it can short itself or ground itself, however you want to call it, it can short itself unto itself. And you know, if the wires touch before they get to the speaker, you're not going to get any audio out there. So we'll just shave those down, then we can get these wired in. We'll start with the center channel. So for these, you want to push the little post, the little binding down, insert the wire, and then I like to give it a little pull on it back to make sure it's actually gripped in there real nice. If you give it a slight little tug, it allows you to know that the, you know you have good contact, good continuity in there. The wire's nice and snug in there. We'll go for the surrounds next. You want to hear it against the metal. And then I always check, no matter how, I've done thousands of these at this point. I still check, I still keep my, see that one slipped out a little bit? See, now it's good. You always have to check your work, no matter how long you've been doing this. You don't, you know, you retain your protocols to make sure you're doing a good job on every single site. So that's in there. Pull it back a little bit. Oh, see, I don't like the way that sat. Let's redo it. No issues to making it right. Okay. Oh, this one's getting a little. All right. So now we have five speakers wired into the AVR. Let's get our 
last two lines, which would be one, our subwoofer. Subwoofer, there's sometimes there's one output, sometimes there's two. We only have one sub, so that'll, that'll cover us. And then the last would be the monitor out to the projector. So this is, at bare minimum, what you need to get a surround sound, surround sound or home theater, audio video receiver, home theater receiver, however you want to call it, wired in. One monitor out, uh, five high powered audio out, one subwoofer low power audio out. The last piece of this would be any source devices you're using. After this, you get into the programming and setup of the AVR and then calibration, either basic with the mic it comes with or more advanced. Um, we're going to shoot separate videos on all that. I want to teach you guys how to use an SPL meter or a decibel meter to actually set the, set the levels on each channel and have a really nice balanced system. Part of the nice calibration that we offer here at Wire Ninjas. And uh, like I said, I'll shoot a separate video on that and much, much more. So. That covers it for today. This is how you wire up a 5.1. All right, guys, that covers our installation of an audio video receiver. We showed you how to wire it up in a 5.1 configuration. Like I said, we stuck to just the wiring. I try to keep it simple, although the videos do play out. I start throwing in information, which sometimes convolutes things, but we're trying to keep it simple. And we're gonna break this stuff down into a whole series. That way you guys can learn and grow with us. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.